book that I read called The Art of Peace, which I recommend. And I flip it open. It's a little teeny thing. And I flip it open every morning and look and read something. And before I came here, I read something. And I opened it up and it said, four things that make you, you know, the true warrior or something. Bravery, wisdom, love, and friendship. And the bravery, uh, I think, is like those that made this happen. And then wisdom, well, you know, you, you know, if, you're, if we're fortunate, if we're, if we're smart, we learn from all the stuff that we screw up. And love, well, don't we all love apples? That's why we're here. And friendship, hey, this is what it's all about. Hello, my name is Rio Wincaller, and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast, where we speak with makers, cider enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. That was John Bunker leading us into this here episode 385 of a Cider Chat called Cider Key. He was reading from the book titled The Art of Peace at New York Ample Camp this past summer. The four words, bravery, wisdom, love, and friendship, are found on page 38 in this book. The book itself could fit in the palm of your hand. I'll have more on this topic, but first, a wee bit of news from out and about in Ciderville. Hey Carter, I know you were doing last week's promos for CiderCon and the American Cider Association. How did you think that went? I was a bit nervous. You had a lot of info to cover, like the dates and what was happening and the location. Let's try to get through it together this week. What do you say? Okay. All right, let's start with the dates for CiderCon coming up in 2024. January 16th through the 19th. Early bird registration is happening now. That's right. CiderCon is taking place in Portland, Oregon. Have you ever been there, Carter? Only to Seattle. Well, anybody who goes there is going to be in for a treat. It is a spectacular region of the U.S. We're talking about the Pacific Northwest, and there's a lot of apples being grown in the Pacific Northwest. And in Oregon proper, there are a lot of cider makers. And you get to visit some of those cider makers on cider tours that are pre-conference activities kicking off that week. There are, this year for the first time ever, a couple of overnight trips. They did them before, but they haven't done such an extensive cider tour. So you want to be checking out the website now. There are trips going up to the Seattle region and the Olympic Peninsula, which is absolutely gorgeous. And you know that there are specialty ciders in all these regions that you don't want to miss out on. So make sure to arrive for the cider tours on Sunday, no later than Sunday, January 14th. The next day is a national holiday celebrating Martin Luther King Day. So that's already a win-win there. So start scheduling your time away from work now, making your plans, getting set up, registering for the hotel. It is early bird time. And I will tell you, if you don't register now for the hotel, you know what's going to happen? They will sell out. That's right. It sells out. So don't, don't, don't like leave this to the last minute. This is the world's largest cider conference for professionals in the cider trade. And where can you register for that early bird registration and get all the details? Go to the ciderassociation.org. Make this one of your priorities today. And I just want to correct myself. I, I think you should arrive January 14th, which is actually a Saturday. You know, you have the whole weekend in Portland just to play. And then you start relaxing on the 15th. And then the cider tours begin on the 16th. You know, why not make a weekend of it and go through that whole week? You're going that far anywhere, wherever you're coming in from the world. So use your time. I mean, you might not go back to Portland for another six years, hopefully earlier if you're lucky. But, you know, just think about those dates. And, you know, Carter helping out and everything going on, there's a lot of changes happening at Cider Chat Central. One thing 
is that there is a new website up. It is now live at ciderchat.com, and there's a lot to peruse in. One thing that I am offering now here is to work with Cider Chat. And you can find the tab right there. This is if you're kind of interested, like Carter, trying your hand at a little bit of podcasting. Maybe you'd like to write some pieces for Cider Chat because you are an enthusiast who just loves talking about your region. Perhaps you want to dig into the archives and help with some of the backup that we're doing now with the, the different archive podcasts. There's almost like 400 of them. And we have to kind of go back and catch the website up. The website is totally live, but I'm still fine tuning each and every episode. We have to go back in there, make sure that the tags are right. There's just so much. It's just just an amazing thing. But anyways, you could go there right on the homepage. You'll see a fun little slider with me welcoming you to come and subscribe, some other little fun photos, and then a search box a search box where you could put in different tags like botanage or ask Ryan, right? These are popular, popular topics on the website, cider making, just in general techniques, all broken down. And slowly over time, we'll be having it separated also from regions. So you could say, hey, I want to know something about cideries in Vermont. And voila, there you go. So check it all out at ciderchat.com. In upcoming episodes, I will continue to bring you up to date with this new website, which is really so excited to bring that to you and to keep on helping cider go up. Walking through the orchards. This next segment is a recording that I took this past weekend while I was up in Hollis, New Hampshire at a farm orchard called Lull's Farm. I was contacted by Josh Lantham of a homebrew club called Brew Free or Die. And I want to tell you, homebrew clubs are really instrumental in helping people learn how to ferment. This particular club does a whole range of different ferments, and each year they meet at this orchard and they are able to get bulk juice. And what a deal it was. It was $6 a gallon. And let me tell you what the makeup of these apples were that they put in. You know, I arrived, uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful day. I arrived early. Already there were tables set up. There was a pallet on the ground and food on the tables. And of course, a whole bunch of cider to be had. And such welcoming people, which really ties into the topic this week called Cider's Key. The apples were a range of black Oxford, blue permain, wine sap, Jewett red, Baldwin, Bella de Bacupa, snow sweet, Roxbury russet, and Hudson golden gem. Those apples were in baskets outside the press room. It was so clean. They they actually picked the apples. These are not drops. And each basket said cider. I will have photos up on the website this week, probably on social media, where you could kind of check out some of the happenings that we're involved in there. I just dug this theme so, so much. And the past couple episodes, I've been talking about making cider. You know, we had the one episode about just doing a jug, another episode about cleaning and sanitizing your equipment. And eventually I'm going to get to secondary fermentation. But this one I'm hoping will encourage you to reach out and meet people and have other folks to lean on in your own neighborhood. And uh, yeah, it was just a wonderful time. So enjoy this little ditty here, recording with the folks at Brew Free or Die. That is a play on words. For those folks who are not in the U.S. or in other parts of the world, The license plates in New Hampshire say live free or die. And it's an economy that has no local taxes per se, no state taxes, but their property taxes get really, really uh, taxed. (laughs) You know, there's like a certain independence in New Hampshire. It's a beautiful state. And obviously, as you're going to find out very quickly, some really beautiful people. Let's roll to that next. I am in the town of Hollis. At where the stop sign, take a slight left <laughs> turn onto Broad Street. Where uh, Lull Farm is located. And I'm wondering if that's it right in front of me. I'm seeing some cornfields, uh, open silent farm stand. No, I don't think that's a farm. It's a different farm. Just a beautiful area. Uh, quite stunning. Came upon a 
covered bridge, actually two covered bridges right next to each other, both pedestrian bridges dating back to 1769. I'm not sure if that's actually the date of the town or the bridge. I'll have to look that up. But one was going over a brook, which must have been a large walkway for folks at one time. Doesn't really make sense in the modern time, but there you have it. And then another tiny little bridge going over a even smaller brook, which could have been totally managed by making a really easy... Oh, here we are. I am right at Lull Farm. This is it. Enough of the commentary. Let's get into getting some cider and meeting the folks here. How you doing? Hi, how you doing? My name's Rhea. Rhea? I'm Liz. Yeah, cousin Rhea. Cider going up? Yeah. A couple of years ago at the Wards competition. At what competition? At the Boston Wards. Have you judged? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three or four years ago. That was like, yeah, pre, pre pro, uh, pre pen pro, pre pen pro, pre everything blowing up. <laughs> yeah, this is nice. What is the club's name? Brew free or die. Brew free or die. Yeah. Yeah, so we use, we've been using these guys because they don't do any dropped apples, whereas a lot of the orchards around here will press the drops to try and save some money. So you have the old English styles and no drops in any of this cider. You know? All this is stuff we've made from previous from, from years. From here? Okay. Yeah. Are there any wild ferments here? Or, or? I think so. No? Wow. I'm surprised. I've, I've done it a few times because it's like not yeah. pasteurized. I mean, you can, but yeah. I find I like to, I, you know... Came to tablet and, and then inoculate with something yeah. fresh. Had yeah. some bad luck with them happening with yeah. the wild, but then you sometimes you get something that turns out really to- super nice. Totally. So. Well, this is what I call Pelican Red. This is a wild ferment. Okay. Nice. It's, don't be deceived by the bottle. I just have to keep that because it was given to me by Ross <laughs> Cider okay. Company, and they named the number one bottle Ria. So. <laughs> so, so that, 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 like isn't, my, that isn't what it says. <laughs> it's actually right here. Yeah. Not shy of yet. Yeah. Then I have to make sure it tastes good though, because you never that. know, right? <laughs> Still on the table. None yeah, of us are afraid. Gotta make sure. Cider makers should always taste their cider first There's before pouring it, right? The and all the yeah. grannies and stuff. Yeah, well, cheers to uh, brew free or die. Thank you. Cheers. All right, yeah. Cheers. Chin chin, everybody. Your, your wild cider. Something different. Just the natural yeast from the apple? Mm hmm. Is it okay if I thank yeah. you and for then, organizing? Are you open? I accidentally. Are you outdoor fermenting? Like open, open, open vat? No, <laughs> I, I put an airlock on I could, it. Okay, I'll okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. that we've been doing it this long. Like, oh, I, yeah, you know, that's more like for a, a brewery. You're going to move everybody's then? I can't tell. Joe, you're going to move everybody's? How long has the club been going for? I believe uh, since 1991 or 92. Oh, that's great. So it's the oldest active brew club in the state of New Hampshire. And, and where do you guys meet? So At my house next Friday. <laughs> awesome. So it's all so at, we, we, at we rotate around. So cool. sometimes we're in the seacoast. Yep. Sometimes we'll, a, wow. lot, a lot of us are in Manchester, yeah. okay. greater Manchester, yeah. Amherst area. So yeah, beautiful. Say half of our meetings are in that area, and then we have other meetings spread out around, you know, yes. our membership. Mm-hmm. And when do you meet? Like, what's a monthly meetup? Uh, second Friday of every month. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. A Friday night even better, right? right? A wild... Okay. Yeah. So, it's not the bottom guy. label, it's yeah, the, top. the top. Yeah. But Did you make this? Yeah. yeah. So we have, uh, you know, a lot of professionals that have come through our club started here like a fair brother who does uh, Moonlight Meadery and Ancient Fire mm-hmm. uh, was uh, Jason Phelps was a member too and it mm-hmm. still is so we have a lot of people that have been doing this for many years and then all that uh, you've been for how long? 92 yeah we'll see. and the club started in 91 well I wasn't here I was in upsta- I was in the Hudson Valley area of New York and I moved back in 2002 so. but nice. the club started yeah, so between club is, BJCP uh, judges and all that we have quite a wide variety of yeah, yeah. membership we have a nice size group. Yeah, like and, I think, uh, and are there like rotating topics for each meeting? So sometimes we will do like a, a certain club competition, like we've done, uh, worked with. Oh, really? Yeah. But what I mean, like the topic, like each month, is there a particular topic that you're looking on? Or? Not really, unless it's, you know, something like the cider will have like the topic focused on whatever the, the competition for that is. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Michigan Hop Alliance, we, we talked to the gentleman that runs that, and he gave us a single variety. Hops, so we split it up amongst the membership. 
make a single hop variety or a, a beer utilizing that hop or having that in the forefront. So nice. So you probably have a cider thing after this, or so is this one yeah, so we Pelican Red. Uh, Pelican Red's just the name of it. It's not a, a apple or anything. It's a mixed blend. I pressed it on an 1880s press I have, and just you know let it go. Yeah, from 20. From 2019, so cider ages. Yes, it gets it better in age. Ages well. It's yeah. probably just about right now. Yeah, no, it's very, very tasty. <laughs> yeah. And and what uh, what's the membership and stuff in terms of like is the cost of membership and all that? Twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars per year. Per year per member. And is there like a, a, a monthly membership fee when you come to the? No. Cl- no. So it's twenty five. No. You, you you bring you bring a, a snacks. You bring like we're bringing snacks here. You bring things to sample and try. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then we, we we do typically a couple of bulk buys of grains where we're, where we're getting you know brewery prices. Yeah. You know we're we're, we're working through some of our friends in the network. Right. You know, the, Great. the Norths yeah, over at Great North are, are also members of the club. Yeah. And, and very uh, gracious to let us use their space sometimes. And Sweet. And we've done honey, honey ball uh, buys before, too, where you get five gallons of honey from mm-hmm. Dutch Gold or whoever, and then obviously the cider every year. So yeah. there's always, I think, uh, inside of you buy just a gallon, it's $8, but for us, they give us a $6 this is a, a gallon a price. This is a killer deal. Yeah, right. This is like the best deal for, and, and right. the range of apples is Right. Fantastic. Right. That's why I wanted to go for apples the wild. Never heard of, right? I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I mean they're classic cider apples right. and really choice ones too. They have some beautiful trees here. How old is the farm itself? People that currently own it bought it in the '60s from okay. somebody that had it prior to that. Yeah. So I'm not sure the the actual ownership, but I know my family has been coming and dealing with them since my grandparents were like fresh out of high school. Yes. You know? Yeah. I mean those trees are like you know 100 oh, yeah. year old trees. So yeah. Yeah. It's you just has some some longevity in it. The, the the cool thing about it is they don't irrigate either, so you can see like year to year. Sometimes they're really big, and there was that year we had the drought probably yeah. three years ago, yeah, yeah. where the the sugar content of the apples was almost double what it normally was, right. just because they were so small. Uh, so it's kind of neat to see year to year how everything goes, and then you know different yeast varieties year to year. What are you making? What are you doing? So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's fantastic. What a nice uh, hookup, and it's nice you have a little bit of food out here everybody's pouring their cider and it's just a meet up to, to get the juice and and get it back home and start that right. primary and hopefully have enough to last you through till the next season's <laughs> pressing that's that's usually our goal make enough to last the year and then do it all over again i usually do about 15 to 20 gallons a year because that's what my wife and i will finish over yeah, the course yeah. of a year unless it's the sizers or something like that that'll sit and age and obviously yeah the, nice the one there that we barrel aged um, the three of the club members myself included all kind of got together and filled a five gallon barrel so that sizer will sit and age well but so tell me about your sizer what what kind of yeast are you using for that I believe in that we use 71B uh, I've, the other size around the table I have, I used a sake yeast, some Y yeast. Okay, well, uh, can I see those? I'd like to taste that. Because I always use a sweet meat yeast, so I'm always curious so about this a different... Is the collaboration. This That's is... That's a sweet little label. Look at that. Yeah, this is the sake size, or that one's mine. Okay. Oh. And then the maple one we used, uh, mm-hmm. the Y yeast. The... Right, I have to let's... look up the code for it, because I don't remember the... I can't pronounce it. They're German... Ale yeast. Mm-hmm. So this this is a sake yeast. Yeah, this is a seventy uh, one. That one's the sake yeast. Yeah. That was seventy one B. Okay. All right. I think that that right there is a pretty special brew. Oh, you got a little. That's okay. Little, 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 uh, not the first. At least little, it's not no, alive. It's from the barrel. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> when I when I bottled it, I intentionally oh, wow, it's didn't beautiful let it nose. find super long because I wanted to keep some of the kind of raisin. The inside on there. of the barrel, you know. Yeah, a little, little. Uh, yeah, the three of us, three enough. of us all made the same sizer and then put it into a 15 gallon barrel that I had. We left in there for what? Oh, that's eight, delicious. Eight, 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 eight. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so what we have the ABV on that is 15.3 percent. That is a big sizer. Yeah. That's a hunka hunka. 
Well, I think we okay, spiked the we spiked the barrel with a bottle of, of whiskey. It w- well, it's a rye whiskey barrel. So you, did you put rye whiskey yes. in it? Okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> Twenty nineteen, delicious. That was so. a fun. That was a fun project. Yeah. yeah I think our I think oh, our session good. cider from last year was an eleven two. Was my session on draft. Because <laughs> <laughs> nice. everything else was the maple was twelve nine, and then I, there was another one that we had. I think was thirteen one. So none of my ciders last year were under. 10%. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, I'm, usually, yeah. I'm usually adding about three pounds of sugar to my base, and, and I'm similar, sitting about 10 11%. Yeah. I'm going to get it back. I'm waiting for make it suck back. You can fire that sucker You getting some for yourself? I do. I already have my <laughs> carboy all awesome. filled. I got to get, I love get it. it off there. I love it. Yeah. So, Lynn, what are you going to do with your cider? <laughs> Honestly, I haven't got a plan. I really wasn't going to get any cider because I have plenty of cider at home. But um, made it last year. I made a sizer, a blackberry sizer, a cider, and uh, what else did I do? Maybe I'll do some more ice cider. Like ice cider. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, freezer. That's impressive. So and how much? Gallon. How much do you get out of the five gallons? Um, not quite a gallon. Not quite a gallon. Yeah, that's a lot of juice for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be great, but not quite a gallon. I have some ice cider over there. Oh, you do? Oh, let me try it. This is uh, no ABV, but it said one one four eight. Holy smokes, that's kind of high. That must have been the original down to one point oh three four. Yeah. That's a big one. That's a big one. As an ice cider should be, right? This is Lynn's. Very apple Yeah. So what do you think? Yeah, good. So I, I can no, really taste the apple the in there, huh? The brands, so. <laughs> like yeah. a little, not like a baked apple, but a little caramelized. Yeah, yeah, it, it concentrates. I think that one might be a little bit of a cheater ice cider. It might have a little honey in it. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a classic ice cider I've tasted before. Yeah. yeah. But that's fine. That's the beauty of cider. You the apples from here, raspberry blossom honey, and Y yeast sake yeast blend. Okay, so it's a liquid yeast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and that was really that was really it. Made it, you know, high enough alcohol to get that uh, back sweet back sweetened it after you know inoculating, killing everything what off. Did you back sweeten it with? Uh, some more raspberry blossom and uh, some of their cider. Their cider. Okay. So usually what we'll do is at the end of the year when we come here, I'll freeze a gallon or so. So I can use it to blend up with honey or brown sugar or something. So when I back sweet, it is their cider right from here. Yeah, yeah. But we'll still put um, pectic enzyme and Camden tablets in it at the start. Okay. And you notice all the stuff that normally... Precipitants drop out. Yeah, yeah, everything that's normally just suspended is gone. So you have nice, clear, almost like Mott's apple juice, just significantly tastier. Yeah, really well balanced. You did a nice job. Thank you, I appreciate it. Is that in the competition? Uh, it is, so it's uh, we're entering entering it in Nurbic next week, which is uh, the New England Regional Homebrew Competition. I believe I have a apple butter boche in my cooler that I can break out that one uh, took Mazer Cup in 2021 as the uh, gold for the best specialty cider. Wow. So, yeah, that, but, that, that's really nice. And I like how you put it in this like nice like ice cider bottle format. Again, thank you for to, to Jason and Ancient Fire for the bottles because uh, okay. I think we uh, last year, the year before, everybody had a really hard time finding 375 uh, wine bottles. So we called Jason and he had a, a few cases of the Bellissima really pretty skinny bottles for me. Yeah, so. those are really nice. They always are a nice presentation. That's so. fantastic, Josh. Well done. Thank you. Did another batch this year. Amy wanted me to do it again. Boche is uh, caramelized honey mead, and uh, we made the apple butter. So it's our homemade apple butter with apples from Lull, a little cider, and some uh, Bragg's apple cider vinegar. So we cook down with the spices, and then use that as part of the fruit in the grist with the cider. Look at that beautiful color, like a dark, dark amber. You're so clear. And you want a medal for this, too. Yep, so this took uh, the ah. gold uh, Mazer Cup uh, wow. in specialty cider. He's the volunteer. Oh, my, my. That's like... 
smooth and shiny in the mouthfeel. It's just like no super, super silky. This is the Maser Cup Apple Butter Bow Shag. Not like coyingly sweet or anything, just super, like when you have like honey on your mouth and it's like super soft there. This is for Nurbic, which is our homebrew competition okay, in two yeah, weeks. New England regional, regional home homebrew competition. So BFD hosts that every year. All right. You know, That's a nice glass. Yeah. Yeah. All the proceeds, we, everything we generate goes to this the food bank. Itself. American and the food bank is based in Manchester. Manchester. And that's we have the competition at the food bank. That's perfect. Wow, that's amazing. Let it go. That rolling oil till it got the right color that I want. The third model. Not creamy, but silky on the mouth. The color is like a rich, 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 uh, dark amber. Okay, so like a mahogany amber. But the mouth feel. Let me go to that again. Really coats it. It's cooling on the mouth, so that's that kind of like silk. When you touch silk, it kind of feels soft to the skin. This is what it tastes like to the mouth. Not heavy. You wouldn't think it has a certain kind of like ABV of, what is it, 13.7% ABV made in fall of 2017. But wow, fantastic. Yeah. All righty. Well, that was just such a wild time. There's a lot of action there. We were right outside of the pressing room, so you could kind of hear it grinding in the background. There was giant pumpkins everywhere. They had a store that was just wild because there were heirloom tomatoes, like a whole table, and I am a absolute t- tomato fanatic. I love it. So I came home with a big bag of that, some apples, and they have, oh, just a lot. You got to check it out. Lull Farm and Brew Free or Die. There will be links in the show notes to that club, along with a link to the American Homebrew Association, which is really good at listing all the clubs in the U.S., Not all clubs are there, of course, so you might have to get onto some of your online forums and say, hey, anybody in the area fermenting, want to make cider together? This is how you can pull into your community and keep on learning the skills, sharing the knowledge, and having folks to raise a glass together. Because as you were hearing... It was fun to be pouring each other's different ciders and the sizers. Ooh, a lot of fun. All right, coming up, we're going to be going to the topic of this here episode, which is Ciders Key. But first, I'd like to thank the fine patrons of this podcast. There's a lot of folks who are just cider enthusiasts who are supporting this podcast, which is listener supported. And that's at the Cider Chat Patreon page. At the new website at Cider Going Up, The whole Cider Going Up campaign page has been revamped. And you'll see the makers who are commercial makers supporting this podcast, such as Ross on Wye Cider and Perry Company, based in Ross on Wye in the UK, Duck Chicken Cider, based in London, Space Time Mead and Cider Works in Dunmore, Pennsylvania, Insider Japan, Japan's first and only bilingual magazine covering the cider universe, Esoterra Cider Works in Dolores, Colorado, Taddy Bogle Cider Works in Acme, Pennsylvania, Bent Ladder Cider and Wine in Doylestown, Ohio, Press Then Press, a family-driven online hub from Seattle, Washington, where you could order your ciders online, and the American Cider Association who this year is bringing us once again CiderCon this coming January. So I guess it's not this year. We already had that (laughs) CiderCon. We're looking to 2024. You too can become a patron by signing up at the Cider Chat Patreon page. Just Google Cider Chat and Patreon. That's spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Or hit the donate button at the new Cider Chat website and be part of helping to keep cider going up. Up next, let's dive into the topic titled Cider Key. I was at camp when John Bunker spoke about bravery, wisdom, love, and friendship from that small palm-sized book. At the time, he said he couldn't remember the name of the author, but I knew the book well, and without a thought, I spoke up and said, Marie Ueshaba. I actually called it out into the room. During camp the next day, John brought up this same passage from the book, showing how four words can have power and be universally applicable, 
even to the world of cider and apples. The art of peace is the English translation of the Japanese martial art, Aikido. And Morie Ueshiba was the founder of Aikido. He had studied a number of martial arts in his youth, judo, jiu-jitsu, and many others. He also served in the Japanese army during the Russo-Japanese War. He was considered a fierce fighter, but in time began to turn away from the ideology that the only way to gain power was to power over. Integrating his vast knowledge of martial arts, he founded Aikido as a way to manage an aggressor or aggression without reciprocation. To practice this martial art requires one to always act without animosity. In a world where violence is often returned with greater violence, one has to dig deep and practice, practice, practice to instill a moral code of conduct that allows one to be brave, act wisely, and move with love in your heart and friendship as your goal. Aikido students then and today refer to Marie Ueshiba as O-sensei, a term of endearment and out of respect for this man who stood one inch shy of five feet or 149 centimeters. Osensei passed away in 1969. John's ability to interpret Osensei's passage from page 39 of the book and relate it to his own life's work with apples was poetic for this podcaster who has been a lifelong student of Aikido and a sensei at my own Aikido Dojo since 1989. I, too, have a copy of The Art of Peace, and like John, have opened to a passage by Osensei many times to read to my Aikido students. The Art of Peace has been a lifelong practice, and I refer to Aikido as my health insurance for my body, mind, and soul. This week's episode is titled, Cider's Key. Key being a universal life force that is present in all of us and all living things, including apple trees, orchards, and cider. If left unnoticed, it is merely present, like a pub that pours pints but has no soul, or a cider that is drinkable yet flabby. A keto is part of my daily life practice. It provides me with a code of conduct and moral courage to work with a wide range of people and situations. Upon interviewing to be a regional craft beer writer back in uh, 2003, a time when there was maybe one other woman in the U.S. professionally writing about beer, it was my Aikido training that allowed me to say with confidence, I feel at home walking into any bar in the world. I could take care of myself. My editor hired me on the spot. I was the first woman craft beer writer for the paper. Who knew, 21 years later, I'd still be writing about beer and cider. When John quoted that passage from The Art of Peace, I couldn't believe my ears. Suddenly, my obscure martial art was being quoted at an apple camp by one of America's beloved apple authorities. At the time, I really didn't know what to think other than cool. John, I noticed, spoke often of love and forgiveness that weekend. In an upcoming episode, I will be playing John's keynote from that camp that left us all wide-eyed and reflective. He didn't talk about apple varieties or identification or making barrels of cider or the main heritage orchard or Fedco trees, both of which he founded. This is the first time I've ever heard him speak where he only mentioned apples as a side note. Instead, he talked about bravery, wisdom, love, and friendship, and how it establishes a climate where others can succeed and in our case, Ciderville and cider can shine. I suspect if you drink a whole lot of cider, you might feel brave, but your wisdom will be called into question. So it really isn't the other way around. 
one first needs to be brave and wise in order for cider to shine. The clip we heard earlier about my trip to Lull Farm and Orchard in Hollis, New Hampshire, is a great example of love and friendship and keeping everyone in the loop. I wrote a short note to Josh thanking him for the invitation, and without any prompts or mention about this week's podcast theme, he replied, We try to make it a point to have new members and guests feel welcome and open to asking questions. I think we've all been to a party or group where we didn't know anyone and felt out of place, so we make sure to loop those new people into conversations. Josh's comment gives me great hope. The stage to discuss apples, cider, specific gravity, and and the pH of apple juice, for instance, begins by having our best foot forward. Cider will only be great if we are great in return. Bravery, wisdom, love, and friendship. Despite our love of cider, it isn't only about what is in the glass that makes us great. Earlier this year, I was in Chicago attending CiderCon at a very late evening gathering, not on the schedule. I was approached by a belligerent man who was intoxicated. He was going on and on about something, and then, out of nowhere, Another man, whom I did not know, walked up to us both and began talking to me. He acted like we knew each other and asked me to walk with him. I obliged, of course, and as we walked, he said he noticed that I was being harassed and wanted to help. The drunk man followed us from behind, but another person, this time a woman who I do know and whom I've had the privilege of getting to know better each year at CiderCon, stepped in between me and the inebriated man, and whisked me further away. Her name is Jenny Dorsey. The cider scene went from one woman alone with a drunk man to a circle of love and protection. Everything changed when two brave and wise colleagues decided to not ignore the situation. My heart was filled with love and admiration that night. The heart of cider was shining bright, and I was proud to be part of this community. Bravery, wisdom, love, and friendship. Turning the ordinary into something spectacular. Tapping into the best parts of ourselves and what is in our glass is Cider Key. Maintaining this practice is not easy. We are masters at convincing ourselves to take the easy route, even when it is at the expense of others. Cider and Aikido, though, they're both niche. Our communities are small. As such, we cannot afford to look the other way and be bystanders. Silence is complicity. I know this well. This past year feels quite successful in accentuating the positive, despite being cyberbullied, called names, threatened, and hearing more than one dismissive excuse why such behavior is acceptable. Excusing the actions of others is not honorable nor brave. It's convenient. Nothing changes. Dismantling embedded norms that foster exclusivity can be done. But such changes happen when not one person, but a community comes together and holds themselves and the scene at hand accountable. We have a long way to go, Ciderville. The wait for change can feel unbearable. Cider has taught me, and I expect you, too, how to be patient. I know it could be done. It requires being an active bystander creating social norms that spotlight the best part of our cider community, role modeling leadership that does not enable a situation to continue. It takes a whole lot of apples to make one bottle of cider. One apple won't do. The same is true for our fledging cider community. Be brave, move with wisdom, and always act with love and value friendships. To succeed, we all have to succeed together. Bravery, 
wisdom, love, and friendship. This is Cider's Key. And with that, I leave you here. This is Real Wind Caller, signing off for now. Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. We like cider. We love orchards and having fun. There is a reason. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh, yes, there is. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh, yes, there is. There is a reason why we drink it like this. Oh, yes, there is. There is a reason. We like walking through the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet. We like cider, we like palms, we like orchards, having some fun. There is a reason. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh, yes, there is. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh, yes, there is. There is a reason why we drink it like this. Oh, yes, there is. There is a reason. We like walking through the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet. Oh, yeah. We, we like cider. Oh, yes, we do. We like palms. Oh yes we do We love orchards Having some fun There is a reason There is a reason why we do it like this There is a reason why we do it like this There is a reason why we drink it like this We like walking down the orchards Dancing in the streets Smelling all the blossoms Kicking up our feet Oh, yeah. We like cider. We like palms. Oh, yes, we do. We like orchards. Having some fun. Yeehaw!